This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. If you are far from fear, far from oppression, and far from terror being established in righteousness, then what do you think you are when you're not established in righteousness? You're going to be open to fear. You're going to be open to oppression. You're going to be open to terror. Why? Because you don't, you're not established in righteousness. The Bible talks about ruling and reigning in righteousness. And when you're established in righteousness, you will rule and reign over fear, over terror, and over oppression. verse 21. Let's just read through this for a moment and show you this. All right, verse 21 says, And you have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. That's what you heard in past time. But Jesus said, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Oh, my God. So Jesus took it from killing, and he put, it, he put anger on the same level as killing somebody. He says, you're, you're, going, you're going around talking about, oh, if you kill somebody, uh, you know, you're going to be in danger of judgment. But Jesus said, oh. He says, I consider you being angry with your brother on the same level as killing your brother. Whoa. Come on, let's keep going for a moment here. Look at um, 27. He says, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already. So, you know, you made this big deal about adultery, and Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, I put that on the same level. I put it on the same level. So you go around and brag about, oh, I've never committed adultery with anybody. Well, have you ever listened, looked at a woman the wrong kind of way? He says, I put that on the same level. I mean, he, he, he's trying to make it so you can see it's impossible for you in any way that you can perform or any self-effort for you to deal with the sin problem. Jesus did. Come on, let's keep going. Uh, he, and then he goes, verse 29, but if thy right hand offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. All right, now, you sit and you talk about sin. Well, Jesus said, if you look at someone, pluck your eye out. I, I, I'm sure sometime in your life you have looked at someone the wrong with lust in your heart. Why do you still have your eye? You're just saying you don't believe this. You, you, why do you still have your eye? He goes on and he says, if your hands offend you, look at verse 31. Uh, well, he goes on to say, if your hands offend you, cut it off. Your hands have offended you. Why, why do you still have hands? Why don't we have a church full of people with a bunch of nubs? Why? You don't, you don't believe this? Yeah, because in, right on the inside of you, you know that it don't really mean for you to cut your hands out. You know you got to get the full context of this before you pluck your eye and cut your hands out. And then he goes on here, watch this. 
He said, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And there are people who've gotten divorces and fornication wasn't involved. They just got a divorce because they were selfish. And they got a divorce because, well, you know, she won't do what I tell you to do and all that other kind of stuff. And, and, and still, look at it. You're, you're, you're still in sin. You're still in sin. Look at verse 38. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And if any man, verse 40, will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, you should let him have your cloak. Uh, you, uh, what? I, give him my coat? You, you hadn't done that. Give to him that asked thee from him uh, that would borrow of thee, turn not away. You've turned plenty of people away. You have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. You're like, man, that's crazy. Hate, love my, love my neighbor, hate my enemy. But he says, Jesus says, he keeps reading, he says, but I tell you to love your enemies. Love my enemies? I ain't loving that joker that, I ain't, I ain't doing, see, here's what I'm trying to show you. Jesus was trying to raise the bar. You thought just by not doing the Ten Commandments that that would make you right with God. And Jesus comes in and says, he says, you know what? I, I, put, I put this on the same level. I put hatred on the same le level as murder. And I, and, 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 and I put a lustful eye on the same level as adultery. And, 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 I, and then you ought to get rid of your eye and get rid of your hands if they've offended you. He, he takes it to another level and says, you, you, can't, you can't do it. You, you, you can't do it. You, you need me. You need a savior. You need somebody to come and save you from your sins, and you keep trying to save yourself from your sins, and it, and it can't happen. It can't happen. Well, Brother Dollar, Jesus didn't come to get rid of the law. He came to fulfill it. That's because he's the only one that could. You can't. Look at what he says in Matthew 5, um, 17. Well, Jesus said he came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to destroy it like you're talking about. No, he says, think not. Verse 17, that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. He says, I am, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus came to fulfill, verse 18. He says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus was the only man to ever walk the earth that had the potential and the ability to fulfill every bit of the law. No man had the ability to do it. No man could keep all the law. Jesus was the only one that could keep all of the law. That's why he said that he didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it because if mankind was going to have a, any chance, somebody had to champion this. Somebody had to meet this qualification. And so now, since Jesus met the qualifications and fulfilled every bit of the law, he is now the only one based on what he did as righteous, and now we can be made righteous when we accept him, the only true righteousness. He is the only true righteousness, and we can accept him, and we can be saved. So you, you can't do this without him. Let me show you one more scripture, because it always comes up. Matthew chapter 7, 21, 23. I was looking at this, and I was like, wow, how did, how did we miss this? Matthew 7, 21 through 23, look at this carefully. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. Wow. And in thy name we've done many wonderful works. Wow. But notice this. And then will I profess unto them. Now, here's the key. I never knew you. I, nev I, I never knew you. you you're, you're not one of mine. I never knew you. He said, depart from me, you who I never knew, and you who work iniquity. We put more emphasis on Jesus said, you worker of iniquity, and we, we completely skip. I never knew you. I never knew you. You assumed that these people who were doing these things 
that God knew them. He says, no, I didn't know them. He said, and he said they work iniquity. I never knew them. See, if you want to be the righteousness of God and you want this gift of righteousness, you got to accept him in your life. You got to know him and he has to know you. And that's so very important. I, I, I want to take that little detour. I hope you got something out of it. But listen, man, this is, this is vitally important for us to know and to understand these things. Amen? So we are righteous in God's eye because of Jesus. So Jesus was treated as the worst sinner on that cross for one reason and one reason only, so that you and I can be treated like the best righteous man ever. He was treated like the worst sinner, so we can be treated like the best righteous man ever. So Christianity is not about doing right to become righteous. It is all about believing right in Jesus to become righteous. Not doing right to become righteous, but believing right by believing in Jesus to be made righteous. Amen? And you saw what we talked about in Galatians 2.21, that you frustrate the grace of God by trying to become righteous in your own effort. You frustrate the grace of God by trying to become right, righteous and right in, through your own effort. It's like, well, why did he, why did, what, you know, what was Jesus even born to do? Galatians uh, 2.21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. And basically that's what he's saying, man. It frustrates the grace of God trying, when you try to become righteous in your own effort. So, the grace of God answers you in your most undeserving moments. His righteousness is your right to God's unmerited favor. His righteousness is your right to God's unmerited favor. I'll say that two more times. That's powerful. Don't miss it. His righteousness is your right to God's unmerited favor. His righteousness is your right to God's unmerited favor. How do you get his righteousness? Lord Jesus, I believe you come into my heart that day. You become righteous. He declares you righteous that day. Now look at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34 in the message translation. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34 in the message translation. He says, think straight. Originally, I think the King, just said, the King James says, awake to righteousness and sin no more. A lot of times people do crazy stuff because they're not awake to righteousness. Here he says, think straight, awaken to the holiness of life. No more playing fast and loose with resurrection facts. Ignorance of God is a luxury you can't afford in times like this. And I'll say that out loud. Ignorance with God is a luxury you cannot afford in times like this. You can't afford to continue to be immature in righteousness. You can't afford to continue to be unskillful in the word of righteousness. He says you can't do that. Not in a time like this. Not in a time like this. You don't want to do that. And then he asks this question. He says, aren't you embarrassed that you've let this kind of thing go on as long as you have? The fact that Jesus has done all of this, has died, he went to hell for you, he, his body was broken and he was beat up for you, he shed his blood for you, he was nailed to a cross for you, and, and, and you diminished what he did and did not and would not receive the righteousness that has been made available to you. You know what we got to do? And here's my point today. We've got to establish ourselves in righteousness. And we've got to stay established in righteousness no matter what the voice of accusation says. You will have many voices of accusations when you start preaching what I'm preaching and when you start talking about what I'm talking about, and you'll, you'll find how many babies are in the body of Christ uh, based on what we talked about as far as being unskillful in righteousness. How many people are immature? How many, many people are immature where the word of righteousness is concerned? 
immature people where the word of righteousness is concerned, they're going to constantly take you back to, yeah, but you got to do this in order for God to do that. And you got to make that happen in order for God to make that happen. They are immature in the word of righteousness. We got to stay established in righteousness no matter what the voice of accusation says. Let me give you a definition of word established because that's going to be the key for the rest of this sermon. To be established in anything, to, it's, that word established literally means to install or settle in a position to show to be valid or true. To install or settle in a position and to show to be valid or true or to prove or to bring about permanently. It, it is to enact. Being established in righteousness is what it's going to take in this day and time. Are you willing to become established in righteousness no matter what the accusations of the enemy when he comes to tell you, you, you can't be righteous, look at what you did. You can't be righteous, look at what you said. Are you willing to be established and to prove that you're the righteousness of God and that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord? Look with me quickly to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14, and then verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 14, and then verse 17. And now watch this. Uh, he said in verse 14, in righteousness shalt thou be established. Say it out loud, I'm established in righteousness. I, I can't tell you how important it is. It's like, it's like the uh, launching pad for your life. Righteousness is like this launching pad for your life, which is why I'm preaching it every Sunday for the last few weeks, which is why I'm just harping on this thing over and over again. If we don't settle ourselves in righteousness and be established in righteousness, uh, then here, here's what's going to happen. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression when you're established in righteousness. Uh, for thou shalt not fear when you're established in righteousness. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee when you're established in righteousness. Now, notice something. If you are far from fear, far from oppression, and far from terror being established in righteousness, then what do you think you are when you're not established in righteousness? You're going to be open to fear. You're going to be open to oppression. You're going to be open to terror. Why? because you don't, you're not established in righteousness. The Bible talks about ruling and reigning in righteousness. And when you're established in righteousness, you will rule and reign over fear, over terror, and over oppression. Now look at verse 17. Verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Now, for the righteous, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. For, because you're the right, it just won't work because you're, you're, you're the righteousness of God. But here's what he says. Look at the authority that's been invested in the righteousness. He says, if you are righteous because of your faith in Jesus Christ, then every word that comes against you, you shall condemn. So anytime you hear words spoken, uh, you know, if you fly on a plane, you're going to die. He says, condemn that word right now. Say, that will not happen to me. See, don't allow those words to come in. You're the righteousness of God. You're clothed with an enormous amount of power. Now, your position in righteousness is going to determine your position in power, is basically what I'm saying. Your position in righteousness will determine how effective you will be in living the life of faith and gaining or taking possessions of the grace of God in your life. Your position, and that's why you got to be established in righteousness. Your position in righteousness will determine this. Your position in righteousness, I'll say it again, will determine your position of power. My position in righteousness will determine my position in power. If, the one, if there's one thing the devil wants to rob from you, take from you, deceive away from you, it is your position of righteousness. How will he do that? Well, as soon as you sin, 
you'll say, I, must, I can't be righteous no more because I sinned. And that's just not true. He made you righteous. He made you righteous. You can't sin away your righteousness. And if he can get you to turn away from that position of righteousness, you also turn away from that position of power. And those things that you have power over because of your position in righteousness, power over lust, power over fear, power over oppression, power over terror, those things that you have power over, uh, out of position, out of power. So, he's going to, I mean, this is an everyday attack, an everyday attack to get you to step away from your position of righteousness because he knows that's your position of power. So righteousness acts like a magnet. It will attract every kind of blessing. Righteousness acts like a magnet. It will attract every kind of blessings. You remember this? But seek ye first the kingdom of God seek his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Righteousness acts like a magnet. It will attract every kind of blessing in your life. Now, you got to make a decision this morning. You got to make a decision of quality this morning. And I know I shared a lot of scriptures and I said a lot of stuff, but I, I said all that to say this one thing. You, you have to, you got to settle this. I am righteous because I made Jesus the Lord of my life, and by faith I'm righteous even though I, can I just be honest with you? I am righteous by faith even when I don't do right. Now, that, that's not saying you get to be righteous and a fool at the same time. You see, when you accept your position in righteousness, you also have power over foolishness. You accept your position in righteousness, you start behaving right. You accept your position in righteousness, you start doing right. But quit exalting the sin issue. Just if you could, just for a moment in your life, just, just believe that the sin, sin has been taken care of. Uh, let me read this scripture one more time in the NLT, Hebrews chapter 9 and 28. It's not an issue with God. Please listen to me. Sin is not an issue with God. It is not something that God's going to come back and deal with it. He's already dealt with it in Christ Jesus. That's why I'm trying to get you to stop diminishing what Jesus did. Christ has dealt with the sin issue. Therefore, the sin is no longer an issue with God. And every time you hear teachings on Jesus or the grace of God, you keep making the sin the issue instead of making Jesus the issue and his righteousness the issue. Look what he says, so also Christ was offered once, he was offered once, not 10, 15 times or every time you sin. Imagine that. Think about, think about what would happen if Christ had to get on a cross every time everybody sinned. He would just be up there all the time. So also Christ was offered how many times? Once, for how long? For all times as a what? A sacrifice or a payment or an offering. He, he was offered as the sacrifice or the peace offering, okay? And as a sacrifice, that sacrifice was good enough to take away the sins of a whole lot of people. He said he will come again, Jesus will, but not to deal with our sins. So why would the Scripture say he's coming again but not to deal with our sins? Because he's already dealt with our sins. And, and you can't keep walking around here just like ignoring it or just keep trying to come up with scriptures out of context to try to prove that that ain't right. And you just don't know enough to even do that. And, and I apologize for getting just, just down to earth with you, but he's already dealt with our sins. Our sins have dealt with. So take some time to worship God and say, Father, thank you for dealing with my sins. Thank you, Lord, for being the sin offering. Thank you that your, you, your body as a sacrifice was enough to take away my sins. The sins are not an issue anymore. People are not going to be going to hell for sins. They're going to go to hell for rejecting the offering. They're going to go to hell for rejecting Jesus. 
People go to hell for rejecting the peace offering, the sin offering. Jesus was, you reject Jesus, you're, what you're saying is you're rejecting the only one that can keep you out of hell. The Scripture says, so also Christ was offered once for all times as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, but not to deal with our sins. Why? He's already dealt with them. But he will come to bring salvation, and this is total salvation. You were saved, God changed your spirit, but you know there's the promise of a glorified body. Amen? When you think of God, do you think of someone sitting high on a throne, looking down and judging you? Do you feel like God is angry with you? Well, in Creflo Dollar's liberating series, Jesus, the Peacemaker, receive a revelation on how God's gift of Jesus Christ produced peace between God and man. For a love gift of just $25 or more, you can receive this series where he shows how Jesus paid the price for us to be at peace with God. Start seeing God loving you with an unconditional love. Stop trying to find reasons why it's not enough and that God doesn't want to help you and bless you and, and prosper you. Understanding righteousness will cause us to reign or to rule in life. When sickness comes, you rule over it. When lack comes, you rule over it. When depression comes, you rule over it. When you understand righteousness, you will rule in life. Call the number on your screen or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org to order today. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Holy Spirit's not sitting, sitting around reminding you of what you did in the past. That's condemnation. He's not going to do that. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species of being. You know why? Because of the image of Christ. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Do you have a burning desire to see lives changed by the gospel of grace? If so, prayerfully consider supporting Creflo Dollar Ministries financially. You may not be called to preach in a pulpit or perform missions work in another country, but you assist those who are called to do these things each time you give financial gifts to this ministry. God bless you, and I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. To support our kingdom mission of winning souls for Jesus, you may call us or give online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for giving and enabling us to share this gospel of grace all over the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.